Hi everybody, welcome to this next video where we're going to talk about angles in parallel lines. Um, but before we jump straight into the, the three kind of rules up here, which are your alternate corresponding and co-interior, we're just going to quickly recap a couple of key points to do with um, angles in general. So the first one you need to be aware of is this one on the left hand side here. So angles on a straight line, hopefully you should know that they equal 180 degrees. Okay, so what I mean by that is this angle here and then if I do the other side green these two angles together have to give you 180 degrees so for example if that one was 60 degrees this green one would end up being 120 degrees so that's the first thing you need to be aware of the second thing you need to be aware of is vertically opposite angles so what I mean by vertically opposite angles are if we've got a cross shape here these are equal okay so if we look at this, this angle here is equal to this angle here. And then if I look at the other side, this purple angle here would be equal to this purple angle here. So your vertically opposite angles are equal as well. So again, if we look at it, if this one here was 60 degrees, this would also be 60 degrees. And this one would be 120. This one would be 120 degrees. And then the other thing you can take from that is that all of those together make a circle and therefore all of them added together make 360 degrees. And then the final one that you need to be aware of is about angles in a triangle. Now angles in a triangle add to 180 degrees. So you should be aware about that. And so what I mean by that is this purple angle at the top here and then the bottom angle here in blue and this angle here in blue have to make 180 degrees. Now, with triangles, you're looking for something like this as well. These two lines here mean that the lines are the same length. And in this case, this is actually an isosceles triangle. That's I-S-O-S-C-E-L-E-S. -E -E this is an isosceles triangle. And what we know about isosceles triangles are that the bottom two angles are the same, okay? So uh, bottom angles, angles are equal okay so if i told you that this one was say 70 degrees this one is also 70 degrees so they both are the same and then that final one at the top must therefore equal 40 degrees because if you do 70 plus 70 you get 140 and then you take that away from 180 and you get 40 because that that and that all added together have to give you 180 degrees so they're kind of like rules that you need to be aware of anyway and now we're going to look at these three up the top here alternate corresponding and co-interior it's really important you remember these words and we're going to look at how we spot them so when you see the word alternate or when you see parallel lines the first thing you should be thinking of is alternate okay so alternate angles look like a z shape okay and i've just shaded those inner bits there because that's what we're looking for so if i've got parallel lines like this, I can clearly see I've got a Z shape there. Now that means this angle and this angle are the same. I can then look at this next shape which is just rotated a slightly different way around. There's a Z shape if I was to rotate it and it'd be this angle and this angle are the same. And then I could also look at the, the same one again but if I do it this way around so not quite a Z, but it still is that diagonal zigzag shape. So you can think about it about being a zigzag. It means that this angle and this angle will end up being the same. So what you can say is alternate angles are equal. And you're looking for that Z shape. Okay. Now... You could also argue as well that in this first example that we just did, I could do this zigzag, which means that this purple bit and this purple bit are actually the same as well. I could do the same in the middle one, go the other way. So that angle and that angle are equal. And then I could actually do the reverse of what we did in the first one and make that one purple and that one purple. So you can always spot a Z shape. It's just looking for which two angles will end up being the same, okay? Um, on a side note as well, thinking about the first rule we've been through there, this makes a straight line and this makes a straight line. 
So it means that the blue and the purple added together will make 180. Blue and the purple added together will make 180. Exactly the same there, 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 and there. So your first rule is alternate angles are equal. Now let's go on to the second rule. The second rule is corresponding. Okay. And it's really important that you do know these words. Now, corresponding angles, we're looking for an F shape. Okay. Again, if you look at these questions, you can still see a Z shape. So if I wanted to, I could make a Z here and say that and that would be the same. But because now what we're doing is we're looking for a different range of shapes, I can make an F by doing this. And what that would mean is this, it's this bottom angle here, because it's that bit of the F, and it's this bit of the F. So it means it's these two angles will end up being the same. Again, if we look at this middle one, I can make an F that way around, and the bottom part of that line and the bottom part of that line are the same. And in the third one here, I can actually create a backwards F. So my F can go this way round, and I end up having the two parts there the same. So just remember, with that F shape, it's the underneath that's the same. But it could also be a bit of a T shape. So if I now look back to the first one, what you can do is you can draw your line there and there again, and I've now made a T. And if you make that T shape, what you're actually saying is the bit above and the bit above are the same. If I look at this one here in the middle, I can go this way and this way, and it means that that bit and that bit are the same. Okay, I could also flip that round and look at it from the other side. So if I go this way round, that is an F shape. It would be this bit and this bit that would be the same. And also I could then go the other way and go my F this way. And it would mean this green bit and this green bit would be the same. So those underneath are what you're looking for. Um, in the other example here, obviously I can just do the reverse of the first one. I end up having those two being the same. And again, thinking back to what we said before, the purple and the green bit there would make 180, purple and the green bit would make 180. Or you could also then look at this T shape. So it'd be this bit here and this bit here that'd be the same. And finally, again, on this one, you could go the other way as well. And I'd have that red one and that red one that would be the same. So there's lots of different ways that you can see them. Okay, just remember that corresponding angles Are equal. And again, you're looking for that F shape. It could be that bit and that bit below and below, but it could also be above and be up, above. Okay, last one. What we're going to look at is actually a, a different shape. So we're now looking at co interior. Okay, so co interior angles are not the same. Okay they actually add to 180 degrees. So you're looking for a C shape, or it could be a U shape, or it could be an N shape, okay? And I'll show you what that looks like now. So let's look at this first one. This here is a textbook C shape. So this, this red angle here and this green angle here has to add to 180 degrees. So if this top angle in red was say 130 degrees, this green one would be 50 degrees. Now what I can do is I can then look at this from the other side and flip it around that way. That's a backward C. And I'd say that that blue shape there and then the purple bit here would make 180 degrees. Now this one would actually end up being 50 this time and this one would be 130. Because if I look back to rule one, we've got a Z shape here, which means this one and this one are the same. And if I go backwards that way, Z shape, that one and that one are the same. But also looking at the C shape, that makes 180, that makes 180. So we're starting to combine our rules. If I look this way, this is what I mean by a U. So that purple angle there and this green angle here would give you your 180. And I could do it upside down, going this way that blue angle, and then the orange angle here would make 180 degrees as well. So you're always looking for these shapes. And again, this one would be exactly the same. There's your C, orange and blue.
blue would make 180. And then if I flip that round and I go this way, you've got the green and you've got this blue down here that would make 180. So just remember, the co-interior angles add to 180. It's slightly different to the other two. So the first two rules, alternate angles, Z shape, are equal. Corresponding angles, F shape, are equal. And then this C shape, co-interior, add to 180. So it's not the same as the other ones. Now, okay, so we're now going to look at an example question here. Um, and we're going to try and look to see how many rules we can apply and put into this one question. So what I suggest you do, first of all, read the key information. So A, B, C, D is a parallelogram. What that means is A, B, C, D. This is my parallelogram, which means that these two sides are parallel and also this side and this side are parallel. It tells me that B, F and A, G are parallel. So B, F and A, G are parallel. So we know we've got parallel lines there and parallel lines there. It tells me that D, C, F, remember the letter in the middle is the angle it's talking about. So D, C, F. So that's this angle here is 110. And then it says C, E, F is a triangle. So C, E, F is a triangle. Where C, E, F, so C, E, this angle here, is four times this angle here. So I can straight away just note that that is four lots of this one here. You could call it 4x to 1x. Okay, or just four to one, it, it wouldn't matter. And we'll come back to that in a second. But from here, what I want you to do is just basically figure out as many different things as you can. And we're just gonna make sure we give a reason for each bit as well. Now, the first thing I can see here is if that's 110, this bit here would be 70. And my reason for that would be, I'm gonna do this in purple, is because angles on a straight line equal 180. So that's my first bit of information I've done. And then I can also say that this angle here is actually also 70. And there's two reasons. I could either say angles in a straight line make 180 again, or you could say vertically opposite as well. So that's vertically opposite. Are equal. So that's two ways of, of looking at those two angles. Um, now, technically from that, I could actually use that information I've just worked out there to then solve this bit. But we're going to imagine that we haven't got all the information yet to work that out. And I'm going to just try and work out everything else that's here. Now, if I look at this shape, let's start seeing what we can see. I can see here straight away, I've got a C shape, which means I could then argue that this angle here is 70 degrees and my reason for that could be co-interior angles add to 180 so that's my c shape here these two added together make 180 but you could also argue the fact that in reality if i was to do a z shape here so going this way this angle and this angle would be the same. So you could argue that could be alternate as well. There's always going to be more than one rule you can use to explain these questions. Okay, let's have a look at what else I can now work out. I can work out this bit here is 110 degrees as well. And my reason for that, well, if that's 70, that has to be 110. Angles on a straight line. A straight line. Equal 180. Or you could again look at the fact that this is a Z shape. So this and this are alternate. So they have to be the same. And then the next thing we're going to talk about here is the fact that this one is 110 degrees. And this one is 70 degrees. And the reason is, is because opposite angles in a parallelogram are equal. So this is also another rule that we haven't mentioned yet. But opposite angles in a parallelogram, sorry, in a parallelogram are equal. So you could use that as a reasoning as well. But then again, if I flip this sideways and if I do actually a um, C shape here, 
that actually becomes a U. And we know that these two added together have to give us 180. So there's another way we could prove that if that one was 110, then I know that this one has to be 70. Okay, so we've got angles in a straight line, angles in a straight line, alternate angles, alternate angles, co-interior, co-interior, opposite angles of a parallelogram are equal. Then we've got vertically opposite angles here. And now let's go down to the last part of our question here that we're going to look at now. I know that in this shape here, that has to make 180 degrees. So I know that we've got 180 degrees because it's a triangle. I've already got 70 degrees. So I know that these two angles here, so this one and this one together, have to make 110 degrees. Now, the key thing to this part of the question is remembering that this one here is four times this one. So technically, you could say that it's split in a ratio of four to one which is a total of five parts. Now, if you're not sure on ratio, check the ratio video out um, that I've done as well, just to get your head around working with ratio. But if I know it's split between five parts, I need to then say I've got 110 degrees, split it between five, and that will give me one part. So that gives you a total of 22 degrees. So one part is 22 degrees. And therefore, this angle here is 22 degrees. And then to finish that off, the other bit up here is four lots of that. So you times that by four and you end up with 88 degrees. So this angle here is 88 degrees. This angle is 22. And then this angle here makes 70. I can double check that works because if I do 88 plus 22, well, 88 plus two would give me 90 plus another 20 is 110. And then add the 70 gives me three, uh, 180. So all of that added together. So in this question here, you are potentially, you can find every single rule in this question. And I suggest if you ever get stuck in one of these questions in your summer exams, all you do, look for the shapes, find the missing bits, give your proof for each stage of your working out, and then work out your answer from there. Hope that helps. Hope you find that useful. And I will see you all in the next video.